Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday. It is the Earth Master out here about 11:45 uh, p.m. or a.m. Excuse me, Sunday, October 6, 2024. Latest activity shows a 2.5 here on the uh, Earthquake 3D globe around the Indonesia Islands area. Also, uh, watching some movement up there in Iceland with a five-pointer coming into this area, 5.1. Uh, just outside this volcano now this is from the USGS the Icelandic folks here uh, reporting this as a five or a 4.5 uh, in a different location uh, right around this uh, volcano area here uh, where we've been seeing a little bit of swarming going on pretty active over here across the uh, wreck in this peninsula as well a lot of rift boundaries uh, quite active out here in the last 24 hours so we'll continue to keep an eye on that of course that's a very volcanic uh, active area California Southern California rocking and rolling a little bit this morning with a 4.0 coming in to the Fontana area if you watch my update last night uh, you'll hear that I mentioned uh, expect some further felt earthquakes overnight and it looks like that has played out uh, not a big earthquake, but uh, a four-pointer shaking things up at about 4 o'clock a.m. local time here. It was felt fairly broadly over the area of Southern California. Just another earthquake out here in the series of earthquakes that we've been seeing elevated out here in the last couple months. Now, this is an area that uh, has been seeing a, a little earthquake swarm here, here in a second location. I say that because there's been a, uh, a previous earthquake swarm area um, over here. So bouncing back and forth in between uh, two areas of earthquake swarms here, roughly about uh, six, seven miles apart from each other. If I remember right, it originally began with this area. Then we've seen uh, this region start up, and now it looks like we're heading back to this area with newer activity, and that's where the four-pointer struck this morning. So... Again, just an overall pattern of seismic activity on the increase out here. And as I've said, when we, when we get some elevated activity like this, as we've seen over the last couple months, keep an eye on some of these faults that are well overdue for some big earthquakes. And that includes the plate boundary itself here, the San Andreas Fault. Since then, uh, let's see what we got since the four-pointer. Mostly smaller microquake activity. A lot of that following that four-pointer there uh, underneath the area of uh well, south montana sits over here fontana region to the northeast just uh you know be on guard out here folks it's getting busy things are moving around and when things move around and they haven't for quite a while that's when we can uh, you know potentially trigger some larger scale activity out here and that uh would not be good news a big earthquake out here in southern california definitely uh don't want that but it's it's gonna happen it's eventually it will uh, there's that earthquake up in Death Valley last night, uh, 3.6. That uh, earthquake right there, along with many other smaller microquakes, microquakes, gave me a view of the overall stress pattern out here across the West Coast. And uh, it still looks fairly active in terms of uh, a broader scale event uh, taking place out here. The San Andreas Fault for now. A couple earthquakes on each side of the plate boundary. No major swarming going on for now, but again, we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Uh, 4.0, a few minutes later, a 2.5, and then a couple other smaller microquakes in that earthquake swarm there in Southern California today. Uh, Northern California, fairly quiet up through Washington. Some older, well, actually, this was this morning here, 2.4 south of Mount St. Helens, a considerable distance here. Aside from that, uh, really not a whole lot of elevated activity up into the Pacific Northwest. Same for the rest of the uh, country out here. Mexico is showing a little bit of movement down here. 26, mile, uh, 26 miles into the uh, northern end here of the Middle America Trench for a 4.1. Not a big earthquake, but, uh, you know, we've been kind of seeing a lot of stuff shift around here lately. And it's fairly evident on the Earthquake 3D globe here. A lot of adjustment going on up in the Canada, all across the Aleutian Trench here with fours and fives. Um, you know, now we got a lot of activity across the Iceland area. Just uh, we're seeing Earth uh, kick up a little bit here in terms of the uh, plate movement and the convection activity below the um, the plates here. Gets everything moving. 
That includes volcanoes as well, so we'll definitely keep an eye on uh, any elevated activity around volcanoes. New Zealand, uh, let's see, since their earthquake there yesterday, uh, looks like they had another four-pointer down here this morning. 4.7, this one a little bit closer up north. Just, again, an overall pattern of stress out here across this area. Yesterday, we seen that five-pointer. Uh, GeoNet server is reporting that as a 5.7, USGS 5.1. But an overall pattern out here of some adjustment taking place. And of course, we, you know, we got the Hikurangi subduction zone that sits offshore here. Well, that's capable of producing a mega quake. And again, when things move around and this hasn't seen a lot of activ activity in hundreds of years, you know, there's probably enough strain out here for a big one. So when things start moving around, that's the time to be prepared. These little quakes are not doing anything in terms of releasing strain. If anything, it's given us an, an idea of areas to watch here for some larger scale activity. Uh, now we got, just as I was talking about the uh, Fontana earthquake activity over here, looks like the secondary swarm region starting to activate. Um, yeah, just outside that area of swarming that we really haven't seen any earthquake activity here in the last, well, looks like the fourth couple days ago was the last event. But if we look at the last 30 days, this has been fairly active along with the, the first original swarming area. So we're starting to see these areas fill back in. I would watch our uh, areas of interest that have been active re recently, such as the Rancho Palos Verdes area, uh, Malibu area, re regions around Los Angeles, Bakersfield, Ridgecrest. I mean, all over the place here in Southern California has been quite active. So just be on guard, folks. Sunday, a lot of people at home. Uh, we got the earth moving around and things are have been stuck out here for uh, you know a couple, couple hundred years, 300 years, over 300 years for the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault and many other fault systems out here that are well overdue. Just got to be prepared. Um, Hawaii, not a whole lot going on out there in the Pacific, Central Pacific that is. Canada, seen a little bit of earthquake activity with a 4.1. Um, a lot of activity from yesterday here across the Aleutian Trench, but I see a couple newer ones in there. Some deep activity into the Sea of Osk up here. That's a uh, fairly deep earthquake, 274 miles deep into the subduction zone. And this is another area I feel is uh, very capable of producing a mega quake out here. It's been a little while, and that's a major subduction zone with a very high slip rate in terms of accumulation over time. It doesn't take hundreds of years for strain to build up out here for a mega quake. And the last one was a long time ago. I'm not talking about the Japan earthquake here in 2011. I'm more concerned with this area up here, uh, the lengthy Coral Kamchatka Trench, 4.6, super deep, adding strain up here across the locked area. Uh, Vanuatu area, fairly shallow earthquake here and getting deeper movement around the Tonga Trench once again. Bunch of threes across New Zealand and even that four-pointer, so just be on guard. There's, you know, when you tie all this in, including yesterday's 5.7, you know, it's, I don't think it's aftershock sequences there because we're seeing earthquake activity away from the main quake that hit yesterday. That was more centered um, down here. So this area, a couple hundred miles north here, is uh, just an overall sign of uh, adjustment going on here across this plate boundary. And New Zealand hasn't really, I guess it's catching up right now, but it really hasn't uh, had a lot of adjustment following months of adjustment up north and down south here recently. So it's uh, adjusting, but let's keep an eye on it. Uh, the rest of the world here is moving out in the Indian Ocean. A little bit of activity out here across this uh, rift boundary, 4.9. That's going to be uh, Ethiopia area earlier this morning, it looks like, a couple hours ago. So moving up in uh, Iran as well. Let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, look at Iceland. Definitely getting active. If I remember right, that's underneath that volcano here that's got a glacier, a subglacier volcano. And uh, a stratovolcano at that. Last activity was back in 2015, it looks like. But uh, looks like there's a little bit of earthquake activity stirring up underneath that region. Overall, the pattern out here across the plate boundary, these rift zones are quite active. So it makes sense to see potentially elevated activity out here 
uh, when things start to move across this area of the rift zones. All right, uh, let's see. Keep an eye there. West Coast definitely uh, rocking and rolling there a little bit. South America fairly active as well. Middle America Trench in the Caribbean over here active. I mean, if you look at the last 24 hours here on the globe, or, you know, everything's set in the motion here. There's a lot of plate movement going on here all over the place. So, of course, when this happens, the elevated chances there of larger earthquake activity increases as well. All right, space weather activity. Well, you know, I'm glad I didn't stay up last night again because it looks like that was a, you know, I'm, I'm going to call it, that was a complete dud of a forecast there uh, over the past three to four nights. They were forecasting G3 storming conditions here, and really, you know, I think we've seen maybe a little bit of KP index up here around the three to four range, but that is, you know, e, a little bit cringeworthy to say the least. They're still calling for maybe a little bit of unsettled conditions here uh, tonight, just in case something may have uh, continued to linger out there, but I don't see it happening. So that plasma cloud from the last couple CMEs there completely missed the planet. A little odd, but uh, completely missed us. Uh, the flare threat still remains elevated here with numerous flares or numerous sunspots here currently facing the Earth. Uh, regional sunspot here group of them yeah they're getting ready to depart over here across the western limb so you know they'll remain a flare threat here for a strong flare uh, while they're still on the earth facing side a couple different regions out here i'm more concerned with this area a lot of bit of, a little bit of complexity here uh, within this area in terms of magnetic structure this region eh, there's a split in between this core, but it's still it's still got a little bit of possibility of some CETA M flare activity. And it looks like maybe another active region out there on the eastern limb. But keep an eye on this area. That's going to be sunspot number 3849. And that has a, a beta gamma structure right here, and it is continuing to grow. So when it's in advancing stage here like that in complexity, that's when the flares tend to pop off. So we'll continue to watch that area. Aside from that, folks, you know, it's, it's uh, unfortunate with the space weather forecast there. It just completely missed us. I don't know if there was any type of aurora activity out there last night. I don't, I don't think so. But looking at these charts here, it was a uh, miss for sure. All right, Storm Prediction Center out here. Marginal risk here for some severe or slight risk for some severe weather across areas uh pennsylvania new york area ohio included in that as well two percent chance for tornado activity a little bit of wind in there as well and some uh, maybe a little bit of large hail falling from these thunderstorms that pop up later today so just a heads up tropical systems here folks we're looking at maybe a major hurricane potentially coming into florida area let's go check out tropical storm um Hil milton i was gonna say hilton but that's milton Uh, which is now, you know, getting its stuff together, getting its act together right here. Not really moving anywhere. Pretty crazy looking, if you ask me. Uh, just sitting there, forming. Uh, not going anywhere. That's crazy looking. So it is expected to eventually move here and become a major hurricane uh, as it makes landfall here around the Tampa area of Florida. So right now, 80 mile per hour sustained winds. That's actually a hurricane mountain. Excuse me. Hurricane Milton, 80 mile per hour sustained winds. That's, yeah, we're getting up there already. So, yeah, bad news because it's going to reach into a major hurricane status here. The model guidances that tells us, you know, how strong it's going to be here are consistent. The majority, if you look at the majority of these models, they're in agreement with an upper three, lower category four hurricane hitting uh, the Florida area, West Coast Florida around Tampa. There is at least three models here in agreement that it could be a Category 5. The models are trending higher since last night, so we're going to have to watch this pretty closely. They, they are already evacuating uh, areas out there across the area of uh, Florida, western coast of Florida here, because of the uh, potential that this has. You know, there's a massive amount of population out here, and you don't want to wait to the last second to get to higher ground and move inland somewhere, maybe even head way north. But... Uh, 
That's expected to be a big one, folks. Let's check out the GFS model here for this area, see what the pressure uh, is expected here. <clears throat> Tampa, Florida, right about here. Watch where this hurricane wants to go here. It does make a southward track, look at that, before moving to the north, uh, northeast here. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me grab a drink here real quick. Something in the air. So pressure gradients right here. Yeah, that's going to be probably category three at least. Um, not good. And it takes it right over Tampa Bay, Tampa area, and then moves northward a little bit into uh, parts of the Carolinas out there. They don't need that. But I am noticing a little bit more northward trend this morning here. So get ready, folks. It's coming. It is expected. Uh, looks like landfall around um, sometime on the day on Wednesday. So get ready. It's definitely uh, not looking good out there. Pretty much a worst case scenario if this thing goes to Category 5. So we'll cover this a little bit more later tomorrow as well as we get a little bit closer to this time frame. Uh, for now, folks, keep an eye on the earthquake activity ramp it up out here around the world and california included so just be prepared uh, if you felt this earthquake this morning if you happen to be up here let me know uh where you were at and uh what it felt like i mean we've been getting all sorts of these earthquakes more fours this year than we've seen in any other year since uh, 1986 as i believe is what dr lucy jones has mentioned and we're continuing to see the fours rack up here so you know, it's just an overall sign here of maybe the big the big one happening out here. Uh, and again, it could happen on any fault system out here. The plate boundary, obviously well-strained, overdue. But there's many other faults out here as well that, uh, you know, haven't seen any big earthquakes on them in, in quite a long time. We'll be off here on the side, folks, kind of monitoring things. If anything pops up here of uh, noteworthy value, we'll definitely jump on here and provide an update. For now, stay safe out there, be prepared, and we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Enjoy your Sunday.